A warm welcome to all the viewers for the course Advanced Manufacturing Technology, AME 702. Myself Thea Pal, Assistant Professor of Department of Mechanical Engineering, is going to give a brief lecture on cellular manufacturing. Well, we have already discussed about the automotive industries as well as the production in my previous lecture. So right now we are talking about the cellular manufacturing. But before coming to the cellular manufacturing, it is very important for us to know about the group technology. Basically, group technology is a philosophy in which the identical parts are assembled together or collected together in a cell of same productivity or same category while performing the production. So, if I talk about cellular manufacturing that whatever parts or families that have been determined by visual inspection, basically part classification and coding or production flow analysis, there is some advantages of producing those part using the group technology machine rather than a traditional type of machining layout. So, when the machine are grouped together, okay, the term cellular manufacturing is used to describe this work organization. So, basically cellular manufacturing, uh, I can say is an application of group technology in which dissimilar uh, machines or processes have been aggregated into cell, each of which dedicated to the production of a part, product family or limited group of families. So, before we go for the detailed lecture of cellular manufacturing, it is very important for us to have a look at the content too. So, right now we are here at the content and we can see that we are going for the introduction, then we will be discussing about the production system, then we will be discussing about the project, uh, production system and layout and then we will be talking about cellular manufacturing. We will be discussing about group technology, then condition for applications, we will be discussing some uh, thing about the part families as well as advantages and limitation. So, before we start, let us have a look at the introduction. Well, batch manufacturing is estimated to be the most common form of production in the few countries and the constitution more than 50 percent of the total manufacturing activities. So, it is very important to make batch manufacturing as efficient and productive as possible. In additional, there has been a train to integrate the design and manufacturing functions in a firm. So, an approach that is directed at both of these objective is basically a group technology and it is termed as GT. Now, group technology is a manufacturing philosophy in which similar parts are identified and grouped together to take advantages of their similarities in design and production. So, similar parts are arranged into part families where each part family possesses similar design or manufacturing characteristic also. So, for example, a plant producing 10,000 different parts number may be able to groove the vast majority of this part into 30 or 40 distinct families also. Now, it is the reason to believe that the processing of each member of a given family is similar and this should be result in manufacturing efficiency also. Now, the efficiency are basically generally achieved by arranging the production equipment into machine groups or sales to facilitate workflow. Now, organization the production equipment into machine sale, where each sale specialized in example or it can be termed as in the production of part family is called cellular manufacturing. So, cellular manufacturing is basically an example of mixed model production. The origins of group technology and cellular production can be traced to around 
in the year 1925. So if I talk about group technology and cellular manufacturing, both are applicable to a wide variety of manufacturing situations. Group technology is most appropriate under the following condition. For example, the plant currently use traditional batch production and a process type layout, which results in much material handling effort, high in process inventory and long manufacturing lead times. Now the part can be grouped into part families also. This is a necessary condition. Each machine cell is designed to produce a given part family or a limited collection of part families. So it must be possible to group part made in the plant into families. Fortunately in this type of uh, typical mid volume production plant most of the parts can be grouped into part families also. Now there are two major tasks that always a company must undertake when it implements group technology. Now these two tasks are number one identifying the part family and number two rearranging the production machine into machine cell. So if I talk about identifying the part families then if the plant make 10,000 different part reviewing all the part drawing and grouping the part into families is a substantial and time consuming task and second of all rearranging production machine into machine cell it is also a time consuming and costly to plan and to accomplish this arrangement and the machine are not producing during the changeover. So if I have a look for group technology offers substantial benefit to the companies that have preservation to implement it also. First of all, group technology promotes standardization of tooling, fixturing and setups. Secondly, material handling is reduced because the distance within a machine cell are much shorter than within the entire factory. Third of all, process planning and production scheduling are always simplified. Fourthly, work is a process which reduced. Fifthly, work satisfaction usually improves when worker collaborate in a group technology cell. Now a higher quality work is accomplished using the group technology. So what we were talking about the cellular manufacturing, well this is obviously a part of group technology that's why I have discussed in the lecture regarding the group technology in a very short explanation way. So if I talk about just a simple introduction then I must say that manufacturing is the process of converting raw material into finished or semi-finished product. The production is the use of man, material and machine to produce finished product and production system can be defined as a transformation system in which a sealable product or services is also created by working upon a set of inputs. So the production system we are talking about. Basically the production system can be classified into this three category. One is job production, second is batch production and third is mass production. So if I talk about the job production that means basically products are made to satisfy a specific order. So that is termed as job shop production. If I talk about batch production then I must say number of identical articles are manufactured either to meet a continuous demand or present demand and mass production it is the same type of product which is manufactured to meet the continuous demand of the product. So if I summarize this particular thing then I can say that if I want to satisfy a specific order 
then i should go with the job shop production but if i want to create a number of identical article through manufacturing either to meet a continuous demand or to meet the present demand then i must go with the batch production okay and if same type of product if you want to manufacture to meet the continuous demand of the product then it is termed as mass production so mass production means you are generating the product in a huge amount so just have a look at this particular thing this is the product production system and its layout so this is your job shop this is the fixed position layout where you can see the product variety you can obtain in maximum level but it will be manufactured till 100 units that is the production quantity and if you want to go for batch production or if you want to go for cellular manufacturing to go for cellular manufacturing you need to have the cellular layout and this is term you can see the product variation is what it is in the medium stage and your manufacturing can be till 10000 unit per year and if i want to have a mass production then you can see the variety is low the production variety is low but the output or quantity of production is high it is near about 1 lakh sorry 10 lakh so you can see this production mass production can go up to millions of unit also because they are generating only one type of product because the product variation is very less very less in this case of mass production now we are talking about the cellular manufacturing whether part families have been determined by visual inspection or parts classification and coding or production flow analysis there is certain advantages in producing those parts using group technology machine cell rather than a traditional process type machine layout so when the machines are grouped the cellular manufacturing is used to describe this work organization and cellular manufacturing is basically an application of group technology which is dissimilar machines or processes have been aggregated into cell each of which is dedicated to the production of a part product family or limited group of families the typical objective of a cellular manufacturing are number 1 to shorten in manufacturing lead time okay so first objective of cellular manufacturing is to shortening manufacturing lead time and this is possible by reducing the setup time work part handling waiting times and batch size secondly is to reduce work in process inventory that is smaller batch size and shorter lead time that reduces work in processes thirdly to improve the quality this is accomplished by allowing each cell to specialize in producing a smaller number of different parts and this help to reduce process variability fourthly to simplify production scheduling that is the similarity among parts in the family basically it reduces the complexity or production scheduling so instead of scheduling part through a sequence of machine in a process type shop layout the system simply schedule the parts through the cell and finally to reduce the setup time now this is accomplished by using group tooling like cutting tool jigs and fixture that have been designed and process the part family rather than part tooling which is designed for an individual part this reduces the number of individual tools required 
as well as the time to change tooling between parts so i can summarize that cellular manufacturing objective is mainly to shortening manufacturing lead time as well as to reduce work in progress inventory along with to improve the quality of the product and then to simplify the production scheduling and finally its main aim is to reduce the setup time so if i talk about that is organizing the production equipment into machine cell where each cell specialized in the production of the part family it is called cellular manufacturing and obviously cellular manufacturing is an application of group technology in manufacturing again cellular manufacturing can be implemented by manual or automated method if it is automated then we are using the term flexible manufacturing so these are the variant opinion regarding cellular manufacturing now here we are talking about that is basically jobs are grouped into families in case of cellular manufacturing system then the families are formed on the basis of process similarities now the part families are related to shop after formation so jobs are moved manually from one department to another if heavy jobs are there then it is overheaded cranes are used so the time required for the movement is also ignored so if i combine it together then we can tell that jobs are grouped into families and these families are formed on the basis of process similarities as well as the part families are released to shop after formation also so jobs are moved manually from one department to the other if it is heavy then it is hand over to head cranes and the time required for the movement is also ignored in this particular case now this is a proper view of a cellular manufacturing first of all you are receiving something then you are dividing into three cell this is cell number 1 this is cell number 2 this is cell number 3 so cell number 1 is basically associated with assembly product a cell number 2 it is basically assembly product number b and cell number 3 it is assembly product number c now you can see different color cells are here located so basically this is tool 5 this is tool 2 this is tool 2 this is tool 5 okay yellow is your tool 1 and uh, green is your again tool 5 and blue is your tool number 3 so you can see if you want to generate the product a so initially you are performing the operation with tool 5 then with tool 2 then with tool 1 then with tool 5 and then with tool 3 to get the final product of a so if you want to go for product b you are using tool number 2 initially then you are moving for tool number 3 then you are going for tool number 5 and then you are going for tool number 4 so to get the product b you are forwarding with such a long step and to get the product c you can see these are the operation they are passing through with the sufficient tool so what it is happening is that product a product b product c are different part of a family and cell 1 cell 2 cell 3 are basically set of machines to produce that part family suppose part family a to produce that product you have to use the cell number 1 and it is a combination of various machines that are associated to produce that particular part okay so if i talk about the cell number 2 it consists of that sort of machines or that sort of tools that is required to generate your product b so you are generating product b only in this particular cell 
and in cell number 3 here are the machines that are used to generate the product C so you can see basically cell 1, 2, 3 are set of machines to produce the part families and product A, B, C are different part families that have shown in this particular figure and finally what it is done is you are shipping the product so cellular manufacturing basically this is an approach facilities which continuously flow of production it basically provides the flexibility to produce variety of low demand products also now this layout is basically suitable for medium variety and medium volume environment also cellular layout is also known as it's a very important term that is product process layout so you have to remember this one cellular manufacturing or cellular layout is also known as product process layout product process layout you have to remember it now a little bit about group technology we are going to say here okay because in my next lecture we are going to have a brief discussion about group technology how this part families or this uh, selling are done we are going to talk about in the next lecture well basically group technology I told it is a manufacturing philosophy in which similar parts are identified and grouped together to take advantages of their similarities in design and production so it contributes to integrate of CAD that is a computer aided design and CAM that is computer aided manufacturing so the group of similar part is also known as part family and the group of machinery is used to process an individual part family is known as machine cell so group technology if I come to a summarization manner then I can say group technology is none other than a manufacturing philosophy in which similar parts are identified and grouped together to take advantage of their similarities in design as well as in production basically it contributes to the integration of CAD that is a computer aided design and CAM that is a computer aided manufacturing and the group of similar part is also known as part family and the group of machinery is used to process an individual part family which is also known as machine cell now condition for application where you are going to implement it basically the plan currently used process type layout so you know already process type layout I have already explained in my previous lecture and secondly the part can be grouped into a part families and it has must have some condition also so part families are what the part families are basically defined by the fact that their member have similar design or manufacturing features so the composite part concept takes this part family definition to its logical conclusion and the composite part for a given family is basically a hypothetical part that includes all of the design and manufacturing attribute of the family and in general an individual part is I mean to say part in the family will have some of the features that characterize the family but not all of them so we are talking about the part families that I have already told that is it is a collection of the parts that poses similarities in geometric shape and of course in size or in processing step that is used in their manufacturing so you can see these are all the identical part isn't it though they are varying in the size but they are the identical part all the production you see same identical part so from here I can also say part families are defined by the fact that their member have similar design or manufacturing features 
and the composite part consists or composite part concept take this part family definition to its logical conclusion now the composite part for a given family is a hypothetical part that basically includes all of the design and manufacturing attributes of the family so in general i can say that an individual part in the family will have some of the features that characterize the family but not all of them now we are talking about identification of part family how you are going to identify so what are the methods that you are using to identify the part families so initially we will be discussing about the visual inspection now visual inspection means what using the best judgment to group the part into part family that means through your visual manner isn't it next we are talking about the part classification and coding so you have to identify the similarities among parts and relating them with a numerical coding system also and lastly that is the production flow analysis which is basically using operation and root sheet to classify parts into part families also so if i want to say that what are the methods that are used for this particular thing or to identify the part families then i must say first of all we need to have some visual inspection and we have seen that visual inspection is best for the judgment to group a part into a part family second of all we have to see the part classification and of course coding also this is used to identify the similarities among the parts and relating them with numerical coding system also and finally we are going to have a look for production flow analysis using operation and root sheet to classify parts into part families also is required so if i talk about the additional factor that must be accommodated by the cell design then it has to be included the quantity of work to be done by the cell now basically this includes the number of parts per year and the processing time per part at each station has to be calculated and this factor determines the workload that must be accomplished by the cell and therefore the number of machine that must be included as well as total operating cost of the sale and investment that can be justified so you have to keep a look over all this thing and secondly the one of the additional factor that must be accommodated by the sale design also that is the part size shape weight and other physical attribute also now this factor determines the size and type of material handling and processing equipment that must be used so you have you know that to identify the part families and again to have the additional factor that must be accommodated by the cell design it should be included so everything you have to keep in mind that this thing has to be there in that particular section okay so i must say the key machine concept is uh sometime used to plan the group technology machine sale also and this uh, approach is to decide what part should be proceed through the key machine and then it should be determined that what supporting machines are required to complete the processing of those parts since we are talking about all this part families so here is an improving layout using the work cell as we were talking about the work cell so if i go for the traditional layout then you can see that straight line makes it hard to balance the task because work may not be divided evenly but if you go for cellular layout this is your straight line task and this is the traditional layout but if you go for cellular layout that means improved layout 
which is basically in u shape this is in u shape okay and the worker have better to access so four cross train worker were reduced like here you are using in the straight line it is going so you need the labor worker in more amount but if you are using in u shape that means you are reducing your employer to perform the task i mean to say you are reducing your trained worker so that all if you workers can carry out the entire task now this is several operators in series well in a process with several operators work is divided into small operation so if one task is uh, given to one person other task is given to another person so if you are dividing the work then the uh, operation time for several operator is also getting reduced a group of operator team i mean to say if they work together to work at the same speed dividing the workload among them then obviously the time for production or to time for manufacturing is also getting reduced so what are the advantages of cellular manufacturing basically it reduces the work in progress inventory secondly less floor space is required third of all shorter flow time of the product no weight in batches due to less distance between the machine fourthly it reduce the raw material and finished good inventory also fifthly it reduce the setup time sixthly it is heightened sense of employee participation and finally it increase the uses of equipment and machinery but every process is followed by some sort of limitation so the limitations are when a new product is manufactured it required if required then they do not fit into the existing cell then whole manufacturing setup need to be restructured and finally to implement cellular layout cost required is also high so for today's lecture i am concluding it here because here in this particular lecture we have already discussed about the cellular manufacturing little bit a general introduction of group technology then we have also gone through the what are the way you are going to implement the cellular manufacturing what are the key objective of cellular manufacturing what are the advantages and disadvantages of cellular manufacturing so thank you for watching the video if you have liked the video then please subscribe the channel as well as like the video and always uh, stay connected so that in my next lecture we are going to have a uh, elaborate discussion about the group technology as well as we are going to do the some numerical how to uh, calculate the part families there and we are going to also discuss about the various plant layout also process layout fixed layout in my upcoming next lecture thank you all of you thanks a lot